This Chinese film director just won an Oscar. But now Chinese media has canceled her. Welcome to China Uncensored. I'm Chris Chappell. We talk a lot on this show about censorship in China. But censorship can be a tricky thing, especially when it comes to Chinese state-run media. One day they might promote something, the next day they might say it undermines China. It's state-sponsored cancel culture. For example, China officially loved American basketball. Until they canceled the NBA because the Houston Rockets manager posted a tweet supporting Hong Kong protests. The Chinese government welcomed Tesla to do business in China. And then one day, Chinese state-run media suddenly criticized Tesla for being arrogant. Chinese state-run media changes its mind so fast, it's almost not worth getting positive media attention there in the first place. And it's also confusing for the people of China to know how they're supposed to feel about current events. Because if they feel the wrong way about something, and they say so, they could get canceled too. This is the case for Chloe Zhao. She's a Beijing-born film director who now lives in America. She won Best Director at the Academy Awards last week for her film Nomadland. It's a story that follows a middle-aged woman living out of her van in the American West. Nomadland has made movie history, and so has Chloe Zhao. Zhao is the first Asian woman, and only the second woman ever to win an Oscar for Best Director. Her film also won Best Drama at the Golden Globe Awards. Back in March, Chloe Zhao's stepmother, who is a Chinese comedian and actress named Song Dan Dan, publicly congratulated Zhao on Weibo, China's version of Twitter, for her Golden Globes win. The post reads, My baby, big congratulations to you. Your achievements exceed our imagination. You are the legend of our family, and I believe that your story will also inspire countless Chinese children. Also in March, the Chinese state-run Global Times published this article calling Zhao the pride of China for her accomplishment. Everything seemed great. That was until Chloe Zhao became censored overnight. Chinese state-run media suddenly didn't want anything to do with Chloe Zhao. They were almost silent when she won her Oscar in April. Nomadland was originally scheduled for release in China on April 23rd, at least according to the Global Times back in March. But Nomadland has still not been shown in mainland theaters. On Chinese social media platform Weibo, this hashtag that reads, Chloe Zhao won Best Director at the Oscars, was censored. Users can't even search the hashtag for 93rd Academy Awards ceremony. No one seemed to know why any discussion of Zhao or her film Nomadland has come under state censorship. To evade censorship, some social media users resorted to using ZT and WYZD, the initials of Zhao's Chinese name and her film's Chinese title, to post about her. Why did WYZD and ZT get blocked? Her win was supposed to be a moment of pride for all Asians around the world. But the censorship made her look like she filmed something that she should be ashamed of. But these posts still ended up being wiped off of social media, along with any mention of her acceptance speech at the Oscars. And if you're thinking that she must have said something in her speech that got her blacklisted, well, it doesn't seem that way at all. When I was growing up in China, my dad and I used to play this game. We would memorize classic Chinese poems and texts, and we would recite it together and try to finish each other's sentences. And there's one that I remember so dearly. It's called the three character classics. And the first phrase goes, 人之初, People at birth are inherently good. This speech was not only apolitical, but it was powerful. Zhao shared fond memories of classical Chinese poems with a Western audience. That's promoting Chinese culture. And it's a big soft power win for China. So why has Chinese media canceled Chloe Zhao? I'll tell you right after the break. Welcome back. 
the Chinese Communist Party has deliberately censored this year's Oscars. That's not just because of Chloe Zhao. A documentary on the 2019 Hong Kong protest called Do Not Split was also up for an award. It didn't win an Oscar, but on the bright side, Beijing's ban gave the film some real publicity. But Chloe Zhao's Oscar win was also a sensitive topic in China. Two state media reporters told the Wall Street Journal that they had received orders from China's propaganda ministry not to report on Miss Zhao's victory, despite what they described as her status as a Chinese national, because of previous public opinion. Previous public opinion? That's a weird way to put it. More like current Communist Party opinion. The controversy began after Chinese netizens fished out this article from 2013, when Chloe Zhao was interviewed in Filmmakers Magazine. In it, Zhao talks about why she chose to pursue film as a career. It goes back to when I was a teenager in China, being in a place where there are lies everywhere. You felt like you were never going to be able to get out. This line, from nearly a decade ago, hurt the feelings of the Chinese people. That is, the feelings of the Chinese Communist Party. And once Chinese netizens fished it out, the Chinese state apparatus suddenly decided to cancel Zhao. And it's especially strange because just a month earlier, Chinese state-run media celebrated her as the pride of China. But now, they're treating Zhao as if she's a lying, China-hating traitor and silencing her completely. Which is to say, for Chinese state-run media, silence can be just another type of propaganda. Now, Chloe Zhao comes from a fairly privileged background. Like I said, her stepmother is a well-known actress. Her father is a top executive. Her family sent her to boarding school in the UK and then the US. It's likely their family is well-connected. But none of that protected her. But I wouldn't want you to think that Chinese state-run media completely ignored Chloe Zhao's Oscar win. Sure, they didn't talk about it much in Chinese, but in English. My favorite state-run media, The Global Times, was happy to use Zhao's win to slam America for its deep-rooted racism and sexism. So what is the future for the depersoned Chloe Zhao? Well, there are some concerns over her next directed film. The Eternals. That's a big-budget superhero Marvel movie set to release later this year. In China, Marvel movies have been hugely profitable for their parent company, Disney. Experts say that while Miss Zhao's background would likely have been a major selling point for The Eternals in China, it could now become an Achilles heel, a potentially devastating blow for the film and for Marvel, which has reaped huge rewards in the Chinese market with movies like Avengers Endgame. In other words, the Chinese Communist Party could cause problems for a completely unrelated Hollywood film because its director said something eight years ago about her childhood experience in China. Never trust the Chinese Communist Party, people. It's almost like China is a place where there are lies everywhere. And those lies come from the top down. And now it's time for me to answer a question from a member of the China Uncensored 50 Cent Army. Fans who support the show on the crowdfunding website, Patreon. BlueCal1033 asks, If we go to war with China, likely over Taiwan, should we seize all China-owned property in the U.S. and cancel all China-owned U.S. debt and call it war reparations? I mean, you know they are going to seize our stuff in China. Good question, Blue Cal. You're probably right that the Chinese Communist Party would try to seize American property inside China if we go to war. But that doesn't mean the U.S. should retaliate by doing the same. I know your question said China-owned property, not Chinese-owned property, but it can be hard to draw the distinction sometimes. What if it's an organization or a company privately owned by Chinese people living in the U.S., but secretly influenced by the Chinese Communist Party? How would you know? Where do you draw the line? We definitely don't want to target two and a half million Chinese immigrants. Many of them are actually Chinese dissidents who escaped China. 
we don't want to repeat what the U.S. did to Japanese Americans during World War II. As for canceling all China-owned U.S. debt, that's a more feasible idea, because that debt is held directly by China's central bank. Thanks for your question. And a big thank you to everyone who supports China Uncensored on Patreon. Visit patreon.com slash China Uncensored, pledge a dollar or more per episode, and you'll also get to ask me questions on the show. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. Thanks for watching China Uncensored.